Hello and welcome back. By now, you should have finalized your story with illustrations and have plenty of practice telling your story. Continue practicing because your video recording is due soon. Today, we will talk about how to teach your story. Which also means that in this video, you will get an overview of how to develop your teaching kit. Remember, the consultations towards the end of the semester will be focused on your teaching kits. And at the end of the semester, you will have to sell your teaching kits to us. The first step to teaching is always planning. That is why we have prepared a reading workshop outline and a lesson plan for you to fill in. Pause the video if you need to. Locate them on Blackboard. You do not have to start planning right this second, but it would be helpful to have it as a reference when watching this video. As you can see from the two documents, you are required to plan four lessons. Now, you might be wondering, why do I need four lessons to teach my story? Although you will be serving at different locations and teaching different age groups, your audience has one thing in common. Disadvantaged backgrounds with very weak English and short attention spans. And so you need to take your teaching step by step. That is why we require you to include four lessons in your teaching kit as indicated in the reading workshop outline and lesson plan. So now, we'll give you tips on how to plan your lessons and design your teaching kit. Our first tip is that you need to set clear objectives for each of the four lessons. Many of our students do not have English lessons conducted in English. So, you'll first need to warm them up. You need to plan a fun icebreaker lesson. Remember the video on giving instructions and managing the classroom? If you've forgotten, go back and watch it again. Remember to establish rules, give simple yet effective instructions, and have a language focus. This way, you'll be able to engage students and help them gain confidence in using English. Having warmed them up, your next step is to teach them the key words in your story, which is what we do in the pre-reading lesson. You cannot teach your story before helping students understand the key words in the story, right? For example, if a main character in the story is a sea turtle and a lion, you would need to teach the words sea, turtle, and lion before the students read the story. You should design activities to help students understand the meaning of the words, recognize the words, spell the words, and use the words. You do not need to teach every single word. For example, think about the sentence, the sea turtle is slow. The students may not know the word slow, but you can easily explain this word by acting it out dramatically when you read the story. After making sure your audience understands the key words in your story, you can move on to the actual story. This lesson is known as the during reading lesson. Remember all the tips we gave you on how to tell your story? Well, all those tips apply in this lesson as well. Your objective is to interact with the students, help them understand the meaning of the story, but most importantly, engage them in simple communication. You also need to design activities to check understanding. The final lesson is called the post-reading lesson. Your goal in this lesson is to help students consolidate everything they have learned, and most importantly, give them the opportunity to use everything they have learned. This would be a good time for students to practice more advanced skills, such as writing or speaking. Having determined the objectives for each of your lessons, your next step is to design activities for each lesson. There should be six stages in the pre-reading, during reading, and post-reading lessons. The first stage is called the warmer. You should aim to motivate students at the very beginning of every lesson. 
be it a game or an interactive review of the previous lesson, you need to motivate and prepare them for your teaching. The second stage is the presentation. This is when you teach. Plan how you will be teaching. What kind of resources can you use? Think about the resources available at your service points. How much and for how long will you be teaching? Consider the student's attention span. After your presentation and teaching, you should give students opportunities to apply what you've taught. So the third and fourth stage are practice stages. Controlled practice comes first. Controlled practices are activities that allow learners to practice new language in a limited form. A limited form of practice, of course, should be followed by extended practice. Activities which allow learners to produce language using the target content freely. What's the difference between the two? Well, for example, when reading the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you might want to teach students rules. Controlled practice would focus on practicing speaking or writing rules that are related to the story. For example, Goldilocks, don't eat my kanji. Goldilocks, please don't sleep on my bed. For extended practice, you may want to extend the speaking and writing practice to rules at school. For example, do not run around in the classroom. Please be nice to classmates. Please help the teacher. Be quiet when the teacher is talking. Now, back to the six stages. The fifth stage is called the cooler, which means a simple conclusion or recap of the lesson in order to check understanding. The final stage is optional. If you want to give your students homework or assessments, that should always come last. In order to help you better plan your lesson, we have the third and final tip for you. Make detailed notes of what you will do in every stage. Record in the lesson plan detailed instructions for each input or activity, the estimated time for each item, and make a detailed list of everything you will need. Now to consolidate, review the teaching kit provided below this video, including the lesson plans, the activities, and the story. Be prepared to tell us whether the objectives of each lesson is clear. Which activities should go in which lesson and in what order? Do you have any ideas on how to improve the teaching kit? You should also start planning your own teaching kit. Remember to do so using the templates and examples we have on Blackboard, as well as our three tips. Good luck and see you in class. Bye! Bye.